Here we start off with a random variable x, which is a Bernoulli random variable. That means it can take values 0 and 1, and it takes the value 1 with probability 0.7. We call that sometimes the success probability pi. So let's start with sub-questions 1 and 2. Enumerate all possible sample outcomes. That's when we are drawing a sample of 3, n equals 3. So the outcomes can be zeros and ones, and we get three of those. And the question is, what are all the possible outcomes when we draw three of these random variables? So let's write a table. In one column we will have just the combinations of outcomes. We call them x1, x2, and x3. Next column will give us the probability that we get that particular combination. And we create a new random variable t that reflects the number of ones in each sample. So the first possible sample would be all zeros. The probability for that would be the probability of zero to the power of three, and there would be zero ones. Then not not one, probability is 0 0.3 squared times 0 0.7, one one. And we continue like this. It doesn't matter in which order you enumerate all the outcomes. So it's always number of zeros. It's 0 0.3 to the power of the number of zeros times 0 0.7 to the power of the number of ones. Uh, that fourth outcome had two ones, and here are all the remaining four outcomes. Okay, so altogether we have eight possible combinations. And let's just complete all the probabilities for this. So it's 0 0.3 to the power of the number of zeros times 0 0.7 to the power of the number of ones. And in the end, we actually have three ones, and that's the maximum value for the random variable t. So now we create a new table for that new random variable t. So here we go. We, it can take values 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's start with the probability that that random variable takes the value 0. There's only one outcome, the first one, and the probability of that is 0 0.3 to the power of 3. I said, I'll correct that later. Uh, it should be 0 0.3 to the power of 3. What about it taking a value of 1? There are three outcomes here, and they all have the same probability. So it's 3 times 0 0.3 to the power of 2 times 0 0.7. So next outcome 2. Again, we have three of our original sample outcomes that deliver that value. So it's 3 times and each of them has the probability 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 to the power of 2. And there's only one outcome that has three ones, and the probability of that's 0 0.7 to the power of 3. So these were our probabilities. Now we're being asked to confirm that really what we've just produced is the uh, probabilities of a binomial distribution and we could add a 1 here and 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 to the power of naught here and then we can see that the first element is always the number of outcome combinations that deliver a particular number t we also call that sometimes the binomial coefficient and then we have 0 0.3 to the power of something to the power of the number of zeros and 0 0.7 to the power of number of ones. Okay, so and that is of course exactly what we were after the binomial distribution. So even if you didn't know what the binomial distribution was beforehand, you actually derived one. So now we're supposed to find the probability distribution of P, the sample proportion of ones. Now that turns out to be quite easy because P is just number of ones divided by n, the sample size. So we add a P column here, and the proportions are naught, one third, two thirds, and one. And then the probabilities which we already calculated are exactly the probabilities for these outcomes. Lastly, we're being asked the question whether P, the sample proportion, is an unbiased estimator of the probability of success, i.e. the probability that x is equal to 1, which is 0 0.7. So let me just replicate that 
uh, probability distribution for the proportion over here we didn't actually calculate all these values so uh, we'll just quickly do that 0.3 to the power of 3 is 0.027 0.189 0.1 and 0.343 of course they sum to 1 as they should for probability distribution so we'll just copy these values across and apply our standard formula to can calculate the expected value for p if it is unbiased it should be equal to 0 0.7 so we'll multiply for each outcome the probability of the outcome and the outcome value. We'll do that for all outcomes. And indeed, we get a result of 0 0.7, which means that the proportion of ones in the sample is indeed an unbiased estimator of the success probability or the probability of having a one in an individual draw.